It's changed since you've been gone. Who is she? It was two years before I even looked at another one. Hey there, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about the hit drama Manifest, but more specifically, all of the characters that you love, hate, or even love to hate. But be warned, this video is going to contain spoilers for the show, so if you're not entirely caught up, click off now. But before we get into the exciting stuff, make sure that you click the like button, hit that subscribe button as well, and the post notification bell, so you're always kept up to date on everything that we put out there. So let's jump into the video. First, let's talk a little bit about Manifest. Manifest is an American supernatural drama that aired on NBC in September of 2018. It currently has four series released. The show follows the story of Montego Air Flight 828 and is theorized to have been inspired by the real Malaysian Flight 370's disappearance. On Manifest, 191 passengers of the plane are presumed dead after the plane disappears for five and a half years, unbeknownst to the passengers on board. The show then follows their reintegration into society as a dark reality begins to come to light in regards to the disappearance. Pretty spooky stuff if you ask me. If you've not gotten a chance to watch it before, give it a go because it is well worth it. Now that we're acquainted with the show, let's take a look at the most beloved characters. Here is our top 5 ranked manifest characters, and these are not in any particular order. First off, Michaela Stone. We're biased because we love Michaela, and how could you not? She's one of the best characters on the show with a ton of different layers, and on top of that, she's incredibly strong-willed. After disappearing on the 828 flight over five years ago, she's gotten a whole lot to deal with when she came back to the real world. Discovering the death of her mom and the fact that her fiancé has moved on with none other than her best friend is a lot to take in in such a short amount of time, yet she still manages to keep everything under control and makes it look easy in the process. On top of this, she also has to deal with some freaky visions as well as return to the police force as if nothing has changed. She's one tough cookie. Next up is Grace Stone. Grace, loving mother and wife, beyond strong-willed and incredibly devoted to her family. This poor lady has been through a lot since the passengers came back, but she's managed to hold her head high through it all. We don't know why she's such a controversial character. She's only human. From struggling with the loss of her husband and son to having to explain this grief to her young and confused daughter, Grace had a lot to deal with before the passengers came back. And then all of a sudden, they did. Not only did she have to come back to terms with herself, but she also had to explain this to an only barely healed Olive while simultaneously offering support to Ben and Cal by trying to understand the hows and whys as to what happened. To really top off her selfless status, she also ended up breaking her relationship off with Danny. Danny was a man that she had started dating during the years Ben and Cal were gone, and he became a huge part of both her and Olive's life. Selflessly, Grace calls it quits with him to stay true to her vows to Ben and relentlessly supported him throughout his transition back to the real world. We think she's a silent hero. Number three, Sanvi Ball. Another flight 828 passenger, Sanvi deserves a spot on this list potentially more than anybody. She is incredibly smart as a graduate student and medical researcher that disappeared on the plane five years ago. Before her disappearance, she lived with her parents while developing a treatment for leukemia. Upon her return, Sanvi discovers that her research has been developed to the stage where it has helped hundreds of cancer patients, including Cal. She ends up teaming up with the Stones and others after the crash to try and get to the bottom of what really happened. They're all trying to figure out what every one of these callings and visions actually mean. And on top of this, she and the team are trying relentlessly to put a stop to what they expected to be their actual death date, five years from their return. She makes an interesting character to watch. With her determination and her workaholic attitude, she'll stop at nothing to get to the bottom of what happened, including experimenting on herself. Next up, TJ Morrison. How could you not love TJ? Sweet and kind-hearted in nature, he's been through it all. After returning from Flight 828 to discover that his mother killed herself in his absence, TJ is left with next to nothing. He soon strikes up a special bond with Ben upon returning, along with starting a relationship with now teenage Olivia. How cute. Considering her little crush on him at the airport all those years ago. After returning, TJ ends up being accused of murder in a very misconstrued order of events, but is 
relentlessly defended by the Stone family, particularly Ben. He later is believed dead, much to the heartbreak of us and some of the other characters. Fortunately, that was just a misunderstanding too. Last on our list of favorites is the one and only Olive Stone, though she clearly doesn't belong at the bottom of the list. Daughter of Ben and Grace, and the twin sister of Cal, Olive went through a dark period after the disappearance of her father and twin, but came out on the other end stronger. In the five years since the disappearance of Flight 828, Olive continued to grow and is now five years older than her twin brother, much to everyone's confusion. She can be pretty brooding at times, but we'll give her the benefit of the doubt, considering everything that she's gone through in the recent years. Having your unaged twin brother and father return from the dead would possibly take a toll on most 15-year-old girls. Admittedly, she did join a cult at one point, but it probably was just a phase. I mean, she and TJ are cute, right? Now that we had a look at some of the most beloved characters on the show, let's first take a look at the ones that we hate. First on the list is Cal Stone. I know, I know, hate's a strong word, especially when it comes to a 10-year-old boy, but oh my god is this kid annoying. Seemingly connected to everything that's happening in regards to Flight 828, Cal knows something and instead of being helpful and sharing, he just draws pictures. Yep, pictures. When the flight went to MIA, Cal was pretty sick and didn't seem like he'd have long to live. Since returning though, he's managed to miraculously and speedily recover and knows a thing or two about the disappearance, but no, he's not too keen on sharing all of it. Instead of outwardly telling everyone what the heck is going on, Cal has instead been building or drawing things related to a vision he had. Seriously, kid, just tell us what's going on. Number two, Ben Stone. Again, I know, I know, but there's just something about the Stone men. They're insufferable. Ben's not bad in nature, but kind of just like Cal, he can be pretty annoying at times. Before the 8 to 8 flight, Ben was just a father, husband, and mathematician, which apparently makes him a self-proclaimed genius that can single-handedly discover all that happened with Flight 828. I mean, really, do you think that he would be a professor if he were that much of a genius? It might seem like we're being a tad hard on him due to the fact that he's been through an ordeal, especially with these hauling's all the passengers are facing. But unfortunately, we can't shake that annoying feeling that we get when he's on screen. It's as simple as that. Can someone else not connect the dots just once? Jared Vasquez. We don't hate Jared, but he does boil our blood a little bit. Before 828, Jared was a detective and the partner of Michaela Stone. Dating outside of work, he proposed to her just before her trip. However, she wasn't sure whether to accept the proposal or not, and ended up leaving him waiting for an answer for five years. Albeit that wasn't her fault, but we do feel bad for him in this sense. He really seemed like he struggled with coming to grips with her being gone. However, in the time Michaela was gone, he also seemed to have done a complete personality switch from a sweetheart that wanted nothing but Michaela's heart to a member of a hate group. While this ended up being an act he was undercover, he still changed pretty dramatically since that one episode. Did we mention that he also married Michaela's best friend during that time that he believed her to be deceased? Yeah, talk about honoring the dead. We don't think we can forgive him for that one. Next up, Adrian. Another victim and passenger of Flight 828, Adrian was okay at first. He was just a fairly young guy trying to readjust and make sense of his life. However, he was quick to change his tune. He became plagued with trouble from the callings that he was recently having and eventually resulted to starting a cult. There's no sugarcoating it. It was a cult. He had a calling where he was supposed to start a religion that surrounded 828, and the people began to treat him like God as he was trying to convince others that the passengers were in some way divine. However, when things started to go awry, he ended up believing that they were instead signs of the apocalypse, convinced by callings they were good. His church and wild accusations ended up causing a lot of problems in the show, despite him trying to be good. We can't say it was his fault how badly the visions messed him up, but we don't like him for it anyway. Last up is Billy. Billy is without a doubt one of the most unlikable people on the show. He's incredibly outspoken, especially in regards to the anti-828 group, and is always spewing nonsense. He made a lot of bad stuff happen, including a pretty serious fire. Plus, on top of this, he is always harassing and attacking people relentlessly for no reason. While he was pretty keyed in on Jared infiltrating the group, he's still pretty hate-worthy. On top of that, he's also pretty dangerous and is unlikely to have shown us the worst of what he can do. So, there you have it. Those are the best and worst characters from Manifest. Let us know if you agree or disagree agree with any of these and what you really think about the show in the comments. We'd love to hear it. Also, if you did like the video, please give it a thumbs up, as well as subscribing to our channel and hitting the post notification bell if you want to see more content just like this. Until next time, guys, we'll see you later.